Hello and welcome to Metal Vice, a podcast where we talk about all things music. Well, the things I care about. <laughs> well, the things, the things I care about. It's the things we care about, which <laughs> is mainly metal music and live music. I am one of your hosts, Brian, joined with my other host. <laughs> Karen. Uh, Karen, what are we talking about today? We're going to talk about the Ailstorm concert at the Vic here in Chicago. Yeah. Um, let's quickly take a look at that. That was, was that? on the 24th. Yeah, May 24th okay. at the Vic, as you said. Tickets were $20.50, um, $9.53 for fees, plus a $3 will call fee. Because you wanted a physical ticket. You got a physical ticket at will call. Go get that. Um, and then $14 in that tax. Amazing, amazing tax right there. Uh, opening for them, we had Luthara and Glory Hammer. Uh, Both bands, I did not know who they were. Same. There were a few Glory Hammer. <laughs> there were a few Glory Hammer songs that when they started playing, it's like I have heard this. Yeah, song. I remember a few of them. I'm like, oh, I've heard you play this. Like when you listen to Ale Storm or something, it must just come on. Yeah, I mean, and to be fair, that's how I found out about Ale Storm. I think I was listening to Amina Marth oh. and Viking Metal, and then it sort of just kept spinning out of thematic metal music into and other things. I got that. There's another one. I can't remember the artist, but it's like Dingy Dingy Ho. Or something. And I love that song. Glory Hammer reminded me of that a, a lot of that band. Uh, okay. We'll talk about that when we get to Glory Hammer. But I love that song. Um, and there were a bunch of similar vibes. So I learned about that. Ailstorm, Glory Hammer, all from just let's pick one Amina Marth song, listen to it, and then let Spotify, Spotify. just do a thing. This yeah. was a few years ago. It doesn't really happen much anymore. No. But that's now it's more other death metal stuff that yeah. Spotify will spin yeah. for me. But at the time it was, that's how I found out about Ailstorm. Yeah. Um, I do feel like the Spotify algorithm used to be a little bit better at giving you more variety of things. But yeah. now it's like, well, you listened to this two weeks ago, so I'm sure you want to listen to it again. It could be very much so. Yeah. But the Vic, um, this yes. was our second time there. We went last year for Behemoth. We weren't doing the podcast at the time, so we didn't get to talk no. about the venue. No, we haven't talked about it yet. What were your thoughts on this venue? I know at the year in review we did last year, this was one of my favorite venues. Uh, I don't know if it made your list or not at the no, time. No, I don't think so. But anyway, what were your thoughts going into this one and seeing this show here? Like my thoughts on the venue? Yeah, yeah, on the venue. Well, I so going to this show, we kind of had discussed just because of everything that we did in April and May. And then knowing that we had a weekend metal festival the next weekend, I told you I would like to partake in the seats at the show in the balcony. So we kind of had that. I had that planned. You were going to go down on the floor so um, for it. But yeah, so. Oh, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, that's a really good point that this venue does have a floor. And we were there for, actually, this was our third show. Yep, it was. We saw, I forgot about Disturbed, Disturbed being yep. there. The floor is weird where it's this sort of step down floor. Yeah. Where there's sections that are higher as you go back with like these metal bars separating each one. The Hard Rock in Vegas is set up the exact same way. Okay. Which is so weird to me. But anyway, whatever. And then there is this balcony up top that you can go to. It's GA. I think it was all GA, but we had VIP, so I don't know if all of it was for Behemoth because we wanted the poster because you got that with it. But um, the front section of the balcony was for this performance. For this performance was uh, VIP or assigned, buy, seating. assigned seating. Yeah, it was assigned seating because they were like showing people where to find their seats. And then the top of it was all GA yeah, seating. Yeah, yeah. Like behind the stairwell, which is fine. I mean, yeah. But you had in your mind that we were going to stay up there for this performance. I was. Because you wanted to relax yeah. for and like. Reserve your energy for, for Milwaukee Metal Fest. Yeah, my whole thing was I didn't really want to like stand for four hours to watch this, which I'm really glad I didn't because I really enjoy just sitting and watching it because it's fun and funny. <laughs> I don't know. Which is weird because we went to Shinedown. You're like, I don't feel like I'm at the show. I just feel like I'm watching something. So why, why is that um, different than this, I guess? So I think it's the stadium versus a stadium show versus like a smaller venue like this. And this is a small ass venue. It is a really small venue. Like probably a thousand people maybe. They're about, yeah. It's got to be something even that. like that. But okay, so a uh, good point to bring up. So at Shine Down, it's it was I was able I don't know. I just felt like I was watching a performance that I wasn't at. 
But I think it's because it was like stadium seating. So we were like a long ways away from the stage. You're way up. You can see the entire crowd where in this balcony and probably other. We've never partaked in other balconies, I don't think. I don't think so, no. Um, but it was kind of, you're still, like, you're pretty close to the stage. You can see the stage. It's not like you're looking at screens or anything. or something. Yeah, so you can see everything that's happening. Um, you can't see the whole crowd. You can see, like, the first maybe, like, 10, 15 rows of the crowd because um, most of them are underneath you. But, yeah, I that's a good point. So I, I did say a, during Shine Down that I don't like bulk, or I don't like seats. Yeah. But and I mean, same thing. We went to. We're going to talk about this with Milwaukee Metal Fest. We spent a lot of time up in the balcony, just hanging out. Yeah. There. Yeah. Just so it's, watching the music. For you, it's more of the size of the venue impacts. Because I mean, like you're you you are right. A stadium is fucking huge. Yeah. And you, if you're further back, you're you're very far back. Yeah. And you don't have the same. My my personal opinion is you don't have the same feeling of the music when you're really far back away from the 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 performance, the stage, where, like I said, like in these smaller venues, you don't really feel like you're that far away. Yeah, I definitely think it's better still on the ground. Oh, yeah, me too. But yeah. it wasn't as bad here in, in these seats by any yeah. means. Yeah. And like I said, like we were going in that I was going to sit in the balcony, you were going to go hang out on the floor, but you didn't really do that. So I went down a couple times, and um, it was very crowded. It was, yeah. And I wasn't this in the mood. This wasn't sold out, was it? I don't think so. Uh, but I also wasn't in the mood to, like, fight to try to work my way. I mean, I'm not that person anyway. Like, I'm if I don't see a clear path forward, I'm not going to, like, tap on somebody's shoulders and try to wiggle my way in. Yeah. I don't know why. I've just never, like, enjoyed doing that. Unless I'm up there and you're yeah, working your way back something. up. Then, yeah. And yeah. usually by that time, I've, I'm going to get drinks, which means I've been drinking a while. And at that point, I'm like, my, I don't care. I'm going through here. Yeah. Attitude. But you're not the person that shows up after the floor is full and like, oh, I'm going to get to the front. I'm, I'm getting real. Like, no, I'm not, I'm yeah. not that guy. Yeah. Um, so I went down there. I checked out the show from the back. It was behind the sound stage, crowded down there, like all, all around there. And I was like, oh, whatever. I'll just go back up there. I hung out for a little bit, took a couple photos and then listened to a little bit of the songs and worked my way back upstairs. Yeah. Um, any other thoughts about the venue? It's very old and ornate. It's like a very, it's an old theater. In Chicago. Yeah, it's an old theater. I, I do like it. Um, the first time we ever went, oh, that I ever went there, I think we saw a movie there. I don't know what movie we saw. See, you said that. I don't think you've ever seen a movie. Yeah. There. I remember sitting Have in the balcony you? and watching a movie. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I was going to bring that up too, because when we first moved to Chicago, uh, we lived on Wellington and Broadway. Yes. Probably a half mile walk from this venue, if that. It was pretty quick. Probably a half mile, yeah, because up to Belmont, yeah, probably. I mean, our train stop was Wellington Brown Line. Yeah. And then two blocks north It's like of four that. blocks. No, it isn't, is it? Yeah, it's a couple blocks. Yeah, two's a couple. <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll cut it in the middle. Three blocks north <laughs> okay. is Belmont. And then that's the brown or the red line stop, and the Vic is right there on that corner. Like there's something else in the corner, but it's like right fucking. Yeah, there's there. like an old bank, or there used to be a bank there, and then it's right behind it. And it's just this old building, kind of divey, rundowny looking, mm-hmm. but it's got so much character, and I love that about it. And I'm a big dive bar fan anyway, so like it, like holy shit, this is a dive bar venue. Like the, that was my first experience with it, and I went to go see a movie, and. I think I saw 10 Cloverfield Lane. The thing is, the movie started really late. 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, stuff like that. And you, especially at that time where I go to bed at 9, I don't go see oh, movies. Yeah, I woke up at 6. So <laughs> or I was at work, walking to work by 6. Yeah. Night. But I mean, so that's where, like, when you said you saw a movie, I was like, uh, really? But if you remember... Yeah, it, was, it wasn't one of those late ones. It was, like, in the afternoon sometime. So maybe it must have been after this. I was like, this is an amazing place. You gotta go check yeah. this out. Yeah. And... It was five dollar movies. It was a, they were brand new movies too that just came out. You can go to the AMC and see them. And I was like, "Fuck, five! I love movies. I'm gonna go see a movie for five bucks." And then cheap ass beer it was like five dollars for uh, an anti hero. And you go up into this balcony, you sit, and on the stage there's just like this, almost like a bed sheet that's been drawn, <laughs> and then like a projector down here pointing up on it, playing playing your movie. And it is was just such an awesome kind of weird run down kind of feel to this movie theater. I was like, holy shit, I fucking love this place. 
I thought that was the only movie I'd ever seen, but if I took you to see another one... Yeah, I don't remember what movie we saw, but I remember but going. That would have been the second one, but we, I only utilized it twice. They don't do movies there anymore, which is a shame. Like, yeah. I would love to go see more movies there, but I only I only did two, and I'm kind of disappointed looking back on it. But even then, I love the venue, the, the run-down yet not run-down aspect of this venue. I think it's pretty run-down. Yeah, it is, but it's, it's very, it could be a lot worse, it could I, guess. Be, I guess. I guess that's where my oh, yeah. mind is. Like yeah. It's kind of run down, but it's got that character feel to yeah. it. So I don't I don't ever feel like the roof's going to collapse in on me. So Oh, I've, I had that thought multiple times at multiple venues, or both venues this past week. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I never had that thought. Like, I was like, this has to be structurally sound. No, no. <laughs> I, but I, think, I think just from the Belvedere. It yeah, incident, yeah. it's like in my mind every time we go to a venue. But that was Even also when we were a at House of Blues. coming through. It was. So it's yeah. a little bit of a different story. Yeah. But I mean. Anywho, yeah. I <laughs> I love this venue. I love the aesthetics, the, the dive bar aspect yeah. of the venue. It's so much character. It's It sounds great when we're in there too, I thought. like Yeah, the, the, the music sounds fine. The one thing that I, for the acoustics that I noticed, and this was during um, Behemoth more than here. But um, the vocals, well, I guess maybe here a little bit because you mentioned it during a band, but um, some of the vocals is very hard to hear. Well, with Behemoth, it was for me. Yeah. Um, I remember some of them were like, but Behemoth has some of those like, I don't even know how to explain it, like just the drown out like soft vocals. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, and those were really hard to hear. But it could have just been the setup. or It could have been, yeah. But. All in all, this is definitely one of my favorite venues. I love seeing shows here. And I what think about we the have bathrooms? One more. <laughs> the bathrooms are tiny as shit. <laughs> uh, the men have one stall, one urinal, and it's usually somebody in both, one person in each of those, somebody standing behind them waiting, and then the long line going out, going the, out door. the door. Yeah. And if you're one of the lucky times where there's like no line, you'll just walk over the door and open it and hit somebody in like yeah. the face. Yeah. It happens all the time. Yeah. I but that's the character aspect that I, I it sucks. Oh, I hate it. But I fucking love it. Yeah. I hate it. so the women have two stalls. Um but when we were when I was waiting for Milwaukee Melda Fest, somebody brought up that they actually traveled from Canada to Chicago to see Ale Storm oh, and then yeah. they went to uh, Milwaukee Melda Fest. And during that conversation, another person was like, oh, was that the show that they didn't have any bathrooms? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, it's true, because when you have a thousand people using two bathrooms. Four total stalls. Four, yeah, I mean, for women, it, I never had to wait, but if you did have to wait, there's nowhere to wait. Like, it's so small. Yeah. So, but, yeah. I, I don't know. I, It's a cool venue. I don't think it's on my top list. Oh, it's on mine for sure. Like I, I love that's, this place so that's much. That's good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can <laughs> you can think that, but yeah, it's so much care. I, I love this place. It's we got one more show coming up there, and I think that's it so far this year. We got a couple things coming up here this year. We do, but I, I don't think at the Vic. I think we just have one more at the well, Vic. It, we're going to a show, but it's not a. Oh, we have like your comedy thing. We're going to yeah. go to yeah. yeah. So it's not a concert, but yeah, and yeah. It, it's such a great place. And especially when we lived like yeah, if a we, 10 minute walk from it. And this it was is easy so for awesome. us to get to just because it's right off the train. It's right off the red line too. So yeah. like that's the heart of public transit in Chicago yeah. basically. That and the blue, but the blue is kind of a pain. For us it's a pain. Yeah. Anywho, uh, that's the venue, I guess. Getting into the, the bands. Um, the first band we have is Lutharo. Uh, L U T H A R O. Yes. Pointed out they're from Canada. Yes. Uh, um, female lead. Female lead. Their set list was very short. Very short. Five songs Phantom, Ruthless Bloodline, Wings of Agony, Hopeless Abandonment, and Lost in a Soul. I really like them. I did too. I'm not going to lie. I did really enjoy yeah. their set. It's different than Elstorm, though. Like, it's different than that music. It's different than Elstorm and Glory Hammer. Well, yeah, this I didn't know who Glory Hammer was. No, but I mean, so. looking back on it, yeah. like, those two thematically kind of make sense. Not, like, together, but they're both but the, thematic bands. Yeah, like, they, yeah. They're structured around a core theme. Yeah. This is just metal music, right? Like, it's just, we're going to play metal music and do our thing. Yeah. Um, I mean, we don't want to, like, downplay it. They were f- fucking amazing, but... They were good. It, it's they don't have like the um 
pirate theme or like a yeah exactly you know yeah, yeah. Um, Dungeons and Dragons theme or yeah, whatever. Yep, so, yep. Yeah. Uh, I did really enjoy their set at the show. She the the vocalist has does the the clean and dirty vocals are clean and harsh. I don't know what the I call them clean and dirty, but it's clean and harsh or whatnot. Yeah. I didn't think her harsh vocals were the greatest, honestly. I know we talked about this. I think you said, oh, they're fine. Yeah, I I'm, thought it sounded fine. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not just like sounded fine. I was just like, it. it's not that deep. It's not that growly. It's it's fine. It's not great, I guess is where I'm at. Like, I, I enjoyed her clean vocals a lot. And then the, the growl was just like, eh. Fine, but it's not great okay. in my opinion. I I thought that she did a fantastic job. I mean, not everybody can growl like, um, I can't think of what her name is, but from oh, from Arch Enemy, Arch Enemy, yeah, yeah. But no, I mean, just like growling in general. Oh, like okay. Doing that, like I, I, I felt it was very weak compared to we've seen a lot of bands this year that utilize the harsh and clean. Yeah aspect and the harsh that they do is very very harsh and this was just sort of light harsh on my okay. in my opinion re-listening to their set i did that again today this morning and it, it, i don't think it was a venue thing it came out even on the audio oh, really that it was it didn't as harsh it, yeah it wasn't as harsh on there as well yeah There's, i haven't listened to their set since then so you haven't okay yeah i um, should have <laughs> just to remember <laughs> it <laughs> wings of agony i think there's one, I think that's the song. There's one part in the end where, or toward the end of the song, where um, the way it's mixed, she like grabs a high note and holds on to the high note for, okay. a, for a while. And then she comes in with clean vocals on that. So it's her doing the high note, then her doing the clean vocals. That's a really cool effect for that track at the end. And then you have your, your backup vocalist. They do their growls. Oh, okay. Yeah. And it's, deep as yeah. shit and like the the three the high the clean and the growl yeah. all at once is like fuck that was really good i'll have to listen to that song again because i don't remember that happening at the venue i don't either um now i'm wondering i'm wondering if like their microphones didn't work as well i mean i do it. remember the backup vocalists coming in there and doing their growls but too. not that but not the high. Not like that. Because you can't really do that unless you're using a backing track. Yeah, yeah. I don't think they were using a backing track at all. So it's like, you can't do that. Yeah. And just the way that was mixed was awesome, I felt like. Yeah, I'll have to listen to that because I, I really want to hear what that sounds like now. But that's one where I was passively listening to it while I was working. And then it came on and I like had to stop and look back like, Who is this? What the fuck? Oh, I knew who it was. Oh, was like, okay. What song is this? This is, this is fun. I like this. Yeah. But I think it was Wings, Wings of Agony at the end of that track. Um, but anyway, all in all, I did think this was a really, really good set. I really enjoyed listening to them. It was very short. There's only three bands, too. And I can't remember what time this started. It felt like it started very early. 7 o'clock. I don't think it was that early. Okay, you're right. You know, yeah, that's not that early. I mean, that's normal for three bands, I think. I mean... And these could just be long songs, too, because I do remember listening to this today, and I'm looking now at the set, and yeah, their songs are like five, six... One seven minute. One seven minute And then song. she had a little bit of banter in she between. She did, yeah. So, I mean, that's like, a... Oh, good. No, go ahead. No. I was yeah. just going to say, that that's a good 30, 40 minute set there, probably. Yeah, yeah. Because, like, I just remember, uh, I think it was before their last song, uh, she was like, oh, you guys ready for, like, Space Invasion? So I didn't know what the next band was going to be like at all. Yeah, she definitely did that with like, you know, your your obligatory, who's ready for the headliner? Yeah. Who's ready for yeah. the, op yeah. like the other opener? And it was like, I thought it was space metal or space. I don't know what she said, but it was something space. Yeah. But you said it was space invasion. That's how I remember and that's how I wrote it down. Yeah. Um, But I do remember when she said that, she gave this like, like this weird like, fuck is that like, yeah kind of face like i don't know what that is but it sounds awesome let's go <laughs> with it um so yeah i don't know i they, they had they had a few banter i felt like their stage presence was great they were jumping around um she was up on the little riser singing and then the yeah. guitars and yeah. drums would come up and do their 
vo- or their solos. Yeah. And she'd like point out like, give it up for him. Let's go. Yeah. Like getting the crowd into it. Yeah. They, uh, she did really good for an opening uh, lead on, you know, like getting the crowd pumped and everything. And I think she realized people weren't necessarily there to see them. Um, I Maybe there's some fans there, but I think a lot of people are there to see uh yeah. Glory, uh, sorry, Glory Hammer and um, Ailstorm more. Like Glory yes, Hammer for sure. For like, sure, yeah. There were a lot of people there for that. Yeah. So I mean, but they did a good, or she did a good job. They all did a good job of you know pumping up the crowd and like yeah. you know getting people because it was pretty packed when they went on. So it was, yeah. Um, like I said, the harsh vocals. While I wasn't a big fan of them, I was a big fan of the band as a whole and what they were doing as a whole. Listening to them just on the audio, it was, it was great. Um, yeah, I'll have to listen to it again to see what. I, yeah, I definitely I want remember. to see them again. Yeah, yeah, me too, me too. I, I mean, if they come back to Chicago, I think they said this is their first U.S. tour. I yeah, I forgot about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, and Canada bands, they generally do add U.S. to their tours. So like I all mean, of it's usually North America, which is U.S., Canada. Mexico City. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Like they go to Mexico, but only Mexico City. <laughs> U.S. Canada gets five. Mexico City. Yeah. But yeah. Mexico City gets five shows yeah. itself. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, Luthara was really really cool. Um, really happy we got to see them. So awesome, man. Ready to check them out again. Yes. Me too. On to Glory Hammer. Glory Hammer. Can we talk about how they came out? Go ahead. Talk about how they okay. came out. So. What I thought was happening is somebody was coming out on a Segway. But it ended up being a cutout card or like a cardboard cutout yeah. of Alan Jackson. And then they played Chattahoochee <laughs> in full. In full, yep. <laughs> With just a spotlight on the cardboard cutout of Alan Jackson. So I listened to the entire concert again from our playlist. Okay. We add everything to our playlist. I told you I would add this song to the playlist. Yes. I did. It came on. I was at Mariano's getting groceries. I smiled <laughs> and I go up to my headphones to change tracks. I'm like, ah, oh, fuck it. Let's listen to it all the way through. <laughs> um, this is a song you were allowed to listen to as a kid. I was. It's a song all about fucking. I know. I don't understand how the fuck you're allowed to wa- listen to that song, but not watch Scooby-Doo. That's bullshit. <laughs> fucking bullshit. This is not good goddamn music. No. Every I mean, all the country songs of the nineties is all about having sex or drinking or Listen, music is good. If it makes you happy, if you enjoy it, that's awesome. It doesn't mean it's bad music if somebody else doesn't like. I don't like this music because it's fucking trash music. Even though it's not to you and I understand <laughs> it's people like I really struggle with this idea that like as long as you enjoy your music, you go enjoy your music. Because it's the same way with me. Like, whatnot, right? Whatever behemoth. Like, how the fuck can you like that? It's blasphemy. It's like, yeah, but it makes me happy. It makes me smile. <laughs> like, not good music. But it's a song all about fucking, like, I'm just, I guess I'm pissed you never watched Scooby-Doo. And I'm pissed that you don't <laughs> like Scooby-Doo. I guess is where it, what it all boils down to. I'm not saying I don't like Scooby-Doo. I wasn't allowed to watch cartoons. Right, and I tried to get you to watch Scooby-Doo, and you're like, eh, I'm done with this. Yeah, but Alan Jackson's cool. Anyway, yeah. They <laughs> no, no, I thought it was really funny when it came out. It I was, was like, funny. I laughed, too. I was too. so happy. I haven't listened to 90s Country in so long, and this was on a Wednesday, and the next Thursday, like, the first two hours of me working, I just listened to 90s Country. And as soon as Chattahoochee was done, the guy comes running out, grabs the cardboard card out, and runs away with it. Yes. <laughs> So it's it's so goddamn weird. I don't understand. It doesn't it. go with anything, but it was so funny. It has to go with something. I think oh, there's ha- some meaning to this. It has to, but it's oh, it was so funny, so funny. Then Glory Hammer takes the stage, yes, one by one, like a normal band does. There's a drummer, a keyboardist, a singer, probably a bass and a guitar. I wasn't close enough to see, but I'm assuming it was at least. I can't remember if there's another guitar also. No, I don't. Th- it, there wasn't two guitars. Oh, are you saying instead of a bass? Well, yeah. No, well, two guitars and a bass or... No, no, no. It was one guitar, bass, keyboards, uh, drum, and then the vocals played the guitar. The guitar. 
Oh, no, no, that was Hailstorm. Yeah, that was Hailstorm. That was Hailstorm. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Sorry, this was a week ago. I'm trying to remember <laughs> everything. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, so bass and guitar then. Okay. Anyway, there's there's a five-member band. Come out one by one, taking their taking their spots, taking their instruments. And they're cheering them on. Like, the crowd is cheering them on as they come out. I think they start yelling hoot at this time yeah, as yeah. somebody comes out. Yeah. And I thought they booed somebody else when they came out. Oh, really? I think so. I think the keyboard was the one who got booed. They're like, oh. ooh, like he's the bad guy. Anywho, or maybe it was who again. I don't know. But the vibe I got from that was instantly medieval times. Like, Oh, okay. Okay. Where you go and you get a dinner and no forks and you get this chicken you're supposed to just pull apart with your hands like you're in the medieval times and you're was- watching like these knights fight jousting and you like your section is who you're rooting for. That's what I got from this when they're coming out. It's like the left side is all about this guy. The right side's all about this guy, whoever's on that particular side that night type thing. Okay. Okay. That's the vibe I got anyway. And I was like super excited. Okay. Right then and there. I was like, holy shit, this is gonna be fucking awesome. Okay. Um but yeah, I guess getting into the the track listings here, um, played a pretty long set. They did, yeah. Uh Holy Frame <laughs> Holy Flaming Hammer of Unholy Cosmic Frost. That's one song. <laughs> Glory Hammer, Glory. the land of unicorns. I missed that song because yeah, I was down yeah. trying to get merch. We'll talk you, about that. You like uh, text me like unicorns or something, yep. and I'm like, oh, sorry. Fly away. Also, Spock Zarahustra. We're not saying that right. No, it's uh, apparently a cover. <laughs> <laughs> uh, from uh, Richard Strauss, Laceland Warrior Hoots Portal. That's so where that's they, where the hoots come that's in. That's where they sing hoots a lot. Ang- Angus McFife, I mispronounced that. Yeah. Keeper of the Celestial Flame of Abernathy. Masters of the Galaxy. Hoots Force, again, hoot. <laughs> Universe on Fire. The unicor- Unicorn Invasion of Dundu. Dundee. Dundee. The Unicorn Invasion of Dundee. <laughs> These songs, I mean, if you don't know the band... The song names tell you everything. Yes. Um, I took this as Camelot themed metal. Metal Camelot, basically. That's what you said, yeah. Um, their backdrop had a mushroom cloud in it. So my assumption, and also once again, listening to the songs again today, my assumption is there was a nuclear explosion in the U.S. somewhere <laughs> And this is in the future, the post-apocalyptic world, back in medieval times now, with some space technology, I guess, with the glory <laughs> hammer um, and unicorns or some shit. I don't fucking know what's going on, but I love every yeah. single goddamn minute of this. Like my notes, I put down mythical metal, like um, like a dungeon, Dungeons and Dragons, or like a mythical universe of. Um, like a mythical story going on with like metal music uh, behind it. And um, I did also put my notes, you love C2E2, which is like a comic con thing. And I was like, these could, these guys could come play like the, the after party thing or whatever. For sure. Like, and everybody be into it. Every, like, I even think though so. it's metal, metal music. It's like, so mythical th- i keep saying mythical but like so like story backed themed yeah that like people would just love it i think so too i think it'd be awesome i mean i also think i don't know if it'd go over as well but um bloody wood can come play at like c2e2 oh yeah and yeah. it's not this would go over better I, think. I don't think the crowd would be as into bloody wood as they would this but i think the guys in Bloody Wood oh, yeah. would have... Oh, you mean the nerdiness of them? Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Ha- would have so much goddamn fun there, where it's yeah. like, they might just show up and go to C2E2 type thing. Yeah. And like, fuck it, we brought our instruments, we're going to play anyway in the corner. We're like, we don't give a shit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, but, this... Like, you said that you thought this was, like, Camelot, but in my mind, it's, like, just a mythical land that they live in. And, like... I guess you can make that out, where, like... A post-apocalyptic could be a mythical land to some extent, but I mean, listening to once again, you haven't listened to the no, I didn't the listen to it again. Set again. No. 
I pick up on a lot more like references. I think to like L A. Oh, okay. Like they call out specific places and things. Okay. That is like okay. This is a hundred years in the future after the nuclear apocalypse happens. This is the world we live in. <laughs> I don't necessarily want to live in this world, but I travel to it and hang out there for a little <laughs> bit. Which yeah, definitely Dungeons and Dragons esque, right? Like yeah. Let's let's put our thinking caps on our, our imagination brains and whatever the fuck, right? Imagination brains. And just go and explore this land and all of its characters that yeah. are fun here. There's a podcast that you used to listen to, like, Hello from the Hello Magic Tavern. Hello from the Magic Tavern, yeah. Like, that storyline reminds me of this. Yeah, it definitely could like, be. Like, these guys could do a podcast all about the, their characters in this land. Who knows? Maybe yeah. they fucking do that already. Yeah. If they do, I would fucking listen to that in a heartbeat. Like, yeah. it would be so much fun. Now, you didn't put two and two together that Glory Hammer was this band um, yes. before going. Yes. And bef- we discussed, I don't know, probably 30 minutes ago that I had already decided I wanted to sit in the balcony. Yep. And one of the reasons was because I didn't think I would be into this music at all. Okay. Not at all, but just there's a couple of Storm songs I know, but otherwise I'm like, eh, I'm just going to go and enjoy the music. To be fair. I also do not think you're going to enjoy anything this <laughs> yeah, night. Yeah. So knowing you had a good time now <laughs> makes me happy. But I, I went into this being like, Karen's not going to have a good time. I'm okay with that because I'm going to have a fucking blast. <laughs> I don't think I stopped smiling at all during their entire set. It was so much fun. I kind of wish we were on the floor. Um, just to experience. Just to experience it. Just like watching other people enjoy it. Watching, there was two sets of couples in front of us yep. sitting, and both of them were, like, both the women, at least, were, like, super into it, and, like, dancing around in their seats, and, like, yeah, like, so excited when a song came on. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I have not seen somebody so excited for a show in so long. I haven't felt that way in so long, and yeah. I, I saw that, too, and I instantly was, like, I fucking wish i were them right now like getting so excited that they're like, getting ready to play something i have yeah i yeah the last time maybe was last year at lala when metallica played whiskey in the jar yeah, yeah. like that may have been the last time where i was like holy fucking shit yes 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 let's go let's do this but like they were so fucking into it and it was awesome to see i like that emotion that that emotion is something I haven't like captured in yeah. a while, and I really like it. Yeah, we really haven't. And now that you say it, we really haven't. And I don't know if it's because we go to a lot of shows now, or if it's we've we're seeing bands multiple times, so we kind of know what the um, the set list is going to be like. Not that we know the set list, or what to expect, or what to expect for the concert. Yeah, where maybe I mean the first time we saw Bloodywood, I think I had that kind of excitement of. But I don't think it was excitement for the band. It was more excitement for the traditional instruments. Yeah. Because I wanted to see how that was done. Apocalyptica was the same way. I wanted to see how it was done. So I was super excited for that. But I wasn't like, oh, my God, they're playing the song. They're playing the song I like. See, that's the thing, too. Like, we go into shows blind where we don't know the music. We just, like, we know one song. It's like, fuck it. Maybe we'll we'll like more. Or we've heard of the band or something. Or something something. like that. It's like somebody has said, oh, this band's fucking awesome. You want to check them out. You should check them out. But it's not something where, even Bloodywood, like, we knew of them. We listened to their music a little bit, but we weren't very versed and, like, we didn't know their music by heart. No, no. Where, rewind time a little bit if we were able to see Chester and Linkin Park for the first time. Because we have never seen them. But if we if we could go back in time and see that, maybe when in the end or crawling or something came on, then we'd be like, "Oh my god, yes!" And we would have had that like excitement, that excitement again. Yeah. But because we knew the music, right? Yeah, uh, Rammstein, like when they played "Not Mine Tile," you got super excited. That's true. That's yeah. true too. Yeah, because yeah, we haven't seen that live. Um, it does happen from time to yeah. time. Yeah, like I'm, I'm trying to think of the last time I had that, and I can't remember. But I've seen you have it. In the last year. It, it happens yeah. sparsely, for sure. Yeah. But it doesn't happen all the time. And when I see other people who have that sort of emotional connection to the music, it just makes me smile for them. Yeah. And it's yeah. like... I was too. It's like, like, for the couple that's sitting in front of us, like, I was just 
so happy for her that she was able to experience this and like I almost wanted to ask her like have you seen them before like or you know maybe she's been listening to the music and she's never seen them and so she was like super excited to see them. I don't know I just or she's seen them and that's the first time she heard the song maybe, like something maybe. like that I, don't I need know. to like open up and have those conversations yeah. with people but I but like I don't know that's the whole point of music and going to these yeah. going yeah. to live music right is to experience that for yourself and not only yourself, but see other people who are just like, yeah. you're all here for the same goddamn reason. You're here to have fun. You're here to escape for a little bit. And I don't know. It's a safe spot. Or it should be a safe spot in most cases, but yeah. it's, it was awesome to see. Yeah. I, I yeah. enjoyed that a lot. Yeah. I really, I mean, I enjoyed glory hammer way more than, so when, uh, the first band said, like, oh, are you ready for a space invasion? I think I even looked at you, like, what are we going to get? Like, uh. I was, when I heard that, I was like, fuck yes, I'm ready. I'm like, <laughs> I don't know what that is. Let's fucking do this. This is going to be fun. And I'm like, Ugh, okay, let's just get to the two Ale Storm songs I know. But then once they started, well, once Alan Jackson came out and performed, then oh you're my like, God. Oh, yes. Now we're good. Now, now we're, we're good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I, oh my gosh. This is so, I would relive this night. It was so much fun. It was. It was great. I don't know a whole lot of the other stuff that was going on. Um, the Hoots, I remember that. The and Hoots. They had like um, a couple like hammer fights or like, uh, not sword fights because it was a hammer. So Glory Hammer is one of the songs that when it came on, it's like, holy shit, I know this song. I've heard this. And he came out with this giant, massive fucking hammer yeah. and kept throwing and then, it in like, the air. An alien or like a space creature comes out and he like fights the space creature. I don't remember that. You don't? Honestly, no. Yeah, like, um, like I just remember like beating them down on the ground like, and he's like crawling away. Yeah. Uh, I don't remember that. But great visuals, great energy. Music was fun. Is it the greatest metal music ever? No. no but it's fun but metal it fun music. fun music? Yes. Oh blast. my gosh, it's so much fun. Like, I think that's... Uh, I always think, like, okay, how can I get people into metal music? And this could be a way. Oh, you think so? Well, like, if you think of... Not anybody I know, but, like, <laughs> if you have... Well, we had... Um, when we first moved to Chicago, we were playing board games with some people. This could be a way. Like, I'm trying to think of, like, the nerdy You have to people. find the right crowd of yes. people to get into this, for sure. Yes. I, um, yeah, this would definitely not be music I would just recommend to anybody. Like, if you want to get into metal, check out Galore. Well, no, I'm trying to think of, like, a, like I'm like, I'm not saying anybody I know. No, I'm yeah, saying, yeah. like, if you want them to get into metal, like, and you know that they're already, like, nerdy into, like, these fantasy worlds. Right. Like, like if you're at Friday Night Magic... And they like metal, or they're trying to get into metal. Holy like, shit, yes. Check out Glory Hammer. Yes. Well, and I remember, before even knowing them, um, looking at their merch, we went, we just went and looked. We didn't yeah, buy anything. Yeah. But I, I think, uh, did I say it was too cartoony? You did say it was a bit cartoony, yeah. Or, um, yeah, I think that's the word I used. Which, because I was just like, no, I don't like that. Like, there's no skulls and yeah. stuff, like normal metal um, stuff. So... I was like, I don't want any of this. But now looking or like hearing them play and hearing their music, I totally understand their merch now. Would I personally buy it? No. I would. I'd get I know you shots. would. I know you would. I, we should have gone back and got one. But we I guess have. we'll have to do that next time we see them. Yeah. Oh, no. I, if they come to Chicago again, I will. We will be going to see them. Um, it was so much fun. Other memories from it. Uh, just the crowd interaction was like, I've never seen people hoot this much. Yeah. Um, uh the keyboardist went to a bar and partake partook in um, a Chicago liqueur liqueur Chicago tradition. I don't know what you want to say. Malort. Yeah. So and he was, he, what was what was he saying? It was um, he, the whole thing was like basically like I came to your land and, and oh, they you know, gave like, me this drink. or Yeah, something. they gave me this drink and like this magical call, elixir that will help heal yeah, me or something. Yeah, shit. called Malort. <laughs> And obviously everybody like screams and laughs and yeah. everything. So we had an experience with Malort. <laughs> yeah. Um, you did. I did not. Yes. I have not tasted it. I think we moved in, in. Well, I don't think. We moved to Chicago in 2015. Yes. And that year the Cubs made it. What? You were like pointing. Oh, no. I'm pointing like 
point one, two thousand fifteen. Cubs made it to the okay. NCLS. <laughs> okay. Sorry, I wasn't like. <laughs> gotcha. All right. I'm, I'm pointing the points. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. Down my checklist. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> So in 2015, we moved to Chicago. Love this city. Always wanted to be here. We finally made it to Chicago. Finally moved to Chicago. My favorite baseball team, the Cubs. Because I love misery, apparently. Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't know why. Um, yeah. But that year... You go for the losing teams. I guess so. <laughs> Goddamn stars. Anyway. Um, <laughs> the, we they, they make it to the playoffs. Yes. I don't know what level the playoffs it was. Was it the NLCS? It was... It's whatever the... If they would have won, they would have went to the World okay, Series. Okay, so the NLCS. Yes. I was working in the loop at the time. You weren't working at the time, I don't think. No. And I told you there's a bars downtown. I want to watch the game in a bar, in a crowd. This like that's the whole point of being here in Chicago is to like live in that moment and like live with that crowd at atmosphere yeah. and whatnot. There's stuff downtown. I'll meet you after work. We'll get dinner. I'll watch the game because it's like a six o'clock game or some shit like that. And there's a place that I would ride the train home and I'd pass called the Tilted Kill. And to me, I was like, that's a fun name. This is going to be like an Irish pub. Like the Tilted Kill. Like we get so drunk, we get tilted. And like men wear kilts. Like I was like, this is going to be awesome. I want to go check this place out. Convince you to come. Yes. And meet me there. We go, we go up the stairs, we go to find it place is empty. There's nobody there. Nobody's in the loop. Everybody's up at Wrigleyville, not knowing we weren't in town that <laughs> or long. Or at least not at Tilted Kilt. Yeah, or that. We didn't know, like, you got to go to Wrigleyville or go to other bars and go to Tilted Kilt. And we walk in, and it's basically Irish hooters. Yeah. Like, yes. the women wearing next to nothing, tiny-ass skirts, their asses hanging out. And I was like, oh, fuck, you're going to be so pissed at me for picking this. Why do you want to pick this place? Like, that's all I ran in my head. And I'd already been there. No, the, you went there afterwards, I think. No, I went there because I went there before the World Series. No, that was the next year when your friends came to town. We had tickets to a game and I went with the boys. Are you sure? Yes. Okay. Because you're like, it's the Irish. No, because I didn't know, I didn't know what it was. But you were like, it's the Irish Hooters, but it's okay because the food is really, really good. And then Baby Nash was like the star of the place. Yeah, I think I went there for... Uh, the only reason is because I did not know what it was when we walked in. And seeing my friend's mom's face, I was like, shit, I fucked up. See, I thought you did because I was pretty sure... No, I never... Well, I, we'll disagree anyways, on that memory. I think I'm this pretty sure the I first didn't know time. what it was. Otherwise, you wouldn't have agreed. You would have told me something this time, too, I think. Anyways. Anyways, I think this is the first time. Anywho, um, get there. Nobody's there. Sit down. It's like, fuck, whatever. We're here. Let's just get food and eat, watch the game. So we're sitting there watching the game, eating the food. Cubs hit a home run. Servers come around with trays. They're like, every time the Cubs hit a home run, we get a free shot. I was like, fuck, that is awesome. I will gladly take a shot. Can I have hers too? I don't think I did that, but she gave me one shot. I was like, thank you. Did my shot. It was Malort. And I was like, nasty ass face. Like, this is the worst thing I've ever had. Put it down. Next batter or next inning. Cups it was hit very a, soon after. Cups yes. hit another home run. She walks right back. Another shot. Uh, I think I'm good. Thank you. <laughs> Even though it. it's free? Yeah. It's like, uh, can I buy one instead? <laughs> like, it, it, Malort is not good. However, I've had it since and it's not horrible. So, <laughs> if you come to Chicago, definitely get a Malort shot. It's... It's a tradition. It's a thing. I've just, never tried just it. Just do it. I don't drink, though, so I think I... <laughs> um, anywho, where were we at? Oh, they, the whole Malort story. Yeah. Yeah, that's where we got off track. Yeah. That's uh, how you got into your Cubs story. Yeah. I I don't know. Malort... We talked about going to all the Kumas and doing a 666 on those. I might have to get a Malort at all of those, just because it's Chicago. So, <laughs> add to the story. <laughs> Nah. <laughs> um, any other memories from this particular set other than it being fucking awesome? Oh, no. No, it was fucking amazing, though. There's one more I have. Oh, okay, what's your I guess memory? two more. One, they had sort of auto-tune 
applied to oh, their yeah. voices at times. Yeah. Like during the um, interaction with the crowd in between. But it was auto tune, like done in a good way, where yeah. it was made to like make their voices sound more demony and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah. It was uh, that was actually really cool. It reminds me. Uh, no, that's probably not a good example. I was gonna say like when, um. In the Book of Mormon, when they're like saying God is talking to you, but it's more demony. Yeah, yeah, yeah more demony. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that was so really that was cool. one thing I remember. The last thing is at the very end of their set, they crowned a king, and then all oh, kneeled yeah. for the king. Yeah. And the only thing that went through my head at that time was like, we're gonna have, to have a throwdown. We're gonna have Glory Avatar. Hammer <laughs> versus Avatar. Like, do have them tour together, and then. Have like a little segment where the two kings do a oh, guitar. Oh, that'd be off. so fun! Like a cut heads and shit, like guitar battle. I think that would be a blast. Oh, that'd be fun. Like, uh, I mean, Avatar's who's, gonna win. Who's the true king? Avatar will win. I think so too, but who knows? <laughs> but that would be fun. We're, we're a bit biased on that aspect. There we go. Now, now we have a tour. We're planning a tour right now. <laughs> Avatar, Glory Hammer will open for Avatar. We'll see. Uh, whoever I think whoever wins king the night before. Gets to open the next night. Oh. So basically it's going to be every other goddamn night. <laughs> yeah. So we have to go to two shows. Yeah. See one where they're opening and one where Avatar opens. Oh, that'd be fun. I know. That, that's just what ran through my head. <laughs> we should do like a 666 on like a uh, dream show. Dream show? Oh, that'd or, be like, fun. Or dream yeah. like, set or yeah. um, lineup. But and yeah. like have reasonings behind it. Not just like, yeah. I like this band. Yeah. Anyways, that was that was Glory Hammer. It was so much fun. I I had a blast. I would I would instantly see these guys again. <laughs> again, is it the greatest metal? Fuck no. Is it some of the most fun you'll have watching metal? Yes. yes. Fuck yes. Hundred percent. So much. It's fun. So much fun. Oh, it's great. And then that 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 fun and enjoyment just kept going for Elstorm, which came up next. Yes. Which was weird because the center of the stage was a goddamn giant inflatable duck. Did you know a duck was like part of their thing? I had no fucking idea. Yeah, no. <laughs> I had no idea. El- okay, can I say what I thought El Stormer was going to be before we get going? Actually, real okay. quick, one other thing I know I just remembered. Okay. I think El Storm came out for Glory Hammer, like the lead singer, and did like a little fake flute, like a toy flute playing for I th- one of the songs. I think you're right. I think you're right, yeah. Um, And then jumped off, like the duet type thing. Yeah. And I'm wondering if... Jumping ahead to Elstorm with the shark. Oh, the, shark the shark was, was from Glory Hammer. Oh, maybe. Yeah, maybe. But uh, go ahead. What were you thinking okay. of Elstorm? So I've never seen like any videos of Elstorm performing or anything. I've only listened to the Spotify. Sorry, mm-hmm. sorry. No. What is Elstorm? What style of music is Elstorm? Pirate metal. Right. Pirate metal. So in my head, whenever I tell people about Elstorm and pirate metal, the thing I tell them is pirate metal. And whatever your brain just conjured in your head for visuals or sounds, your brain's 100% right. I don't know if you're going to say the same thing, but go ahead and see what you're saying. So I was thinking it would be more like Pirates of the Caribbean coming out and playing metal music. Okay, so not 100% right, like 95% right. So like people with like eye patches and like dirty and like scars on their head. The hats coming out and playing metal music. Okay, but what did we actually get? We got like guys in swim trunks and an Irish, like a kilt, a kilt, like very Irishy. <laughs> it was not what I had pictured or envisioned at all, and honestly, I was a little bit disappointed. All right, you're not wrong there. All right, so when I said it's 100 percent right, in my head, I think I would have done the same thing: Pirates of the Caribbean in all that garb. Yes. But the music aspect. Oh, the music is 100% aspect. Yes. What I would have expected. The the visual that you see on stage does not go with the music. No, the visual is more of um, summer beach day with the boys. Yeah, sure. Um, in Ireland. In the, sure. <laughs> there was only one kilt, to be fair. Yeah, but they were all wearing green. Yeah, I don't know. What? Why not? <laughs> I don't know. No, I'm not saying it was bad. It was just it was. Different than what I had envisioned going into it. Because I had seriously thought it was going to be people dressed up like pirates. So they had a keyboardist too. And the lead singer was also on the guitar. I thought that was weird as shit. To have two... <laughs> two and keyboards? At, yeah, and at first I was like, 
the lead singer, they just gave that to him. Like, like here's like when you give a, your like brother or sister, like whoever wants to play the games with you, and like, no, you're you're the other guy shooting like on games and whatnot, and you just unplug it. I thought that's what might be going on, but there were times where he was hitting it, and it was like, oh no, it's completely different. You're gonna have to come up with a new thing. You've used that like three times now in the last six weeks. What's that? Your whole like, oh, you give your little brother a no. This is that's a hundred percent what it is. Like, like here, here's that? a guitar. It's unplugged. Yeah, I no, I didn't do it. It got done to me a lot. Because oh. <laughs> you suck. <laughs> yeah, I was given a controller in like racing games, and it was like, my car's not going that fast. It's like it's not you. It's the driver in the car. Like it's like, like you just got the bad driver. It happens. Like it was shit like that where it's like, <laughs> then that's why you're losing. Like. But no, it was one of those, well, we're going to play and we're going to have you shut up and stop bothering me while I play my game oh, okay. type thing. Okay. But and no, noodles. it was an actual instrument. He was playing it, a guitar. But visuals were off, as you said, except for this giant fucking duck. I, we're all over the place, and at least I am. I had so much fun. Again, this was going into this show. Again, I knew I was going to have a blast, and I thought you would not. But... A part of it was I knew the music was sort of gimmicky and sort oh, of okay. fun. I don't want to say like gimmicky in a bad way, but it's 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 fun. It's fun metal. It's fun music. And to me, when I go to metal shows, sometimes I feel like there's sort of a uniform you kind of have to wear. You, <laughs> you're not allowed to smile. You're supposed to be frowny. You have the big tough guys. They're always big and tough. Uh, but to be fair, like all music has sort of their uniform that goes with that style of music, and sometimes you can get lost in: Am I wearing the right uniform? Am I doing the right thing during a show? And it it kind of takes away from the enjoyment of the music, which is what it's all about. Is you're here to enjoy the music? You're not here to like look at me. I I fit in with you all type thing. It's like you're here. You you are who you are. You're here to enjoy the music. And Ailstorm to me going into the show was like, I don't have to worry about a goddamn thing. Like the music is just fun. I'm just here to have a fun time. Do you really worry about going to other concerts? Like sometimes, sometimes I have that vibe for sure. Hmm. For sure, sometimes I do. But okay, this one it was sort of like, I don't give a shit. I'm just here to listen to pirate metal. And there are people wearing. You said the band wasn't wearing your your Pirates of the Caribbean yeah. stuff. Yeah. There are plenty of motherfuckers in the crowd. Yeah. We went, yeah, we went and got pizza, and we were like, so it's just around the corner from uh, the venue, and we're we're just watching people walk by, like they're going to the show, they're going to the show, they're going to the show, because they all have like pirate hats or like one person was like in all the garb. I think they had like a little parrot on them too. Yeah, you should have wore like a parrot shirt or something. Should have. Um, we have a couple. <laughs> we haven't gotten into the set list at all. Let's yeah, get into that real quick. It. Uh, we start off with Kill Hold. That was one of the songs I was telling you about at the beginning. It was like, oh, they tell you it's a way to torture and kill someone. Which, great fucking song. Like, the whole lyric aspect of it, again, fun. of just like, hey, there's this motherfucker who's trying to mutiny against the captain. We need to kill him. But we're, we're nice people, so we're not just going to shoot him. We're going to kill hold him, which is throw him under the ship and, like, run him back and forth under the ship. And well, how's the lyrics go? Kill hold that filthy lad. Send him down to the depths below. Send him down with a bottle of rum and a yo ho ho. Something along those okay. lines. But like the whole like with a bottle of rum and a yo ho ho. Like <laughs> love that shit. You just got so excited. I, I did. It's so much fun. Uh, then we go into pirate metal drinking crew, which I think this then ties in a little bit to like the the pirate crew shirts a little bit. Yeah. Um, also the lyrics. I, I listening to this again. I've listened to this whole set three times now since the show. <laughs> um, I get the vibe that they wrote this song after like hearing critics like, this is garbage music. This is just a parody. Oh, it's, and yeah. like, like There's parts in the lyrics where it's something like, guess what? We fucking hate you. Go fuck yourself too, you piece of shit. Basically something along those yeah. lines. Of like, we're just doing our thing. Fuck you. And like It's over and over and over. Like I, I love that so much. Um, Under the Black and Banner is the next song. The Sunken Norwegian, Elstorm, their name, Cannonball. Again, awesome lyrics. Uh, 
stick a cannonball up your cunt and stick your dick <laughs> in the blender too. Like yeah. just yeah. like okay, like this isn't Shakespeare by any means, but this is fun. I can chant this, I guess. Uh, hangover uh, cover as well, but just like I got a hangover. Whoa, I don't know. It's it's fun. <laughs> followed by Magellan's expedition exposition. Followed by Magellan's exposition. Expedition. God fucking damn it! What is it, Karen? <laughs> Magellan's. The next song is Magellan's Expedition. Sure, whatever. Uh, Mexico. Mexico. Uh, that's another one of their songs I knew. I didn't know. I don't know many of their songs. I know a handful of them. Uh, Kill Hold, El Storm, Mexico for sure are songs I know. Tortuga is followed by that, and instantly that's where you get like the Pirates of the Caribbean theme. Yeah. It's like, all right, you're just pulling from Pirates of the Caribbean yeah, here yeah. for everything. Uh, Nancy the Tavern Winch. <laughs> like, just a fun, fun name. That just reminds me of when you ride the Pirates of the Caribbean, how it used to be with, like, I'll take the redhead. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, yeah. Yeah, like, now it's like they're selling a chicken, but they used basically to be selling like, prostitutes. Yeah, yeah, it used to be selling the women. Yeah. Oh, all right. Sorry, fun. we shouldn't be laughing about that, but. <laughs> um, Rumple Kebab. Kaboom. I, I whatever. Um Rumple Kaboom, I guess. Cabo. Sure. Shipwrecked. P A R T Y. Party. So shipwrecked should be played on Shiprocked. I think we said that. Like, oh, I think they, they were did on shiprocked. They were on Shiprocked a couple years Which ago. Which would be fucking phenomenal yeah. to see. This it should be, be on every single metal cruise ever. This on a Marth when they do put your back into the like Put your back into the oar. That should be your sail away song. Of just <laughs> yes. everybody get on the deck and start rowing as the ship sails out. Like yeah, oh that'd be funny. And then yeah, they should definitely be on every single. Okay, cruise. sorry. Now we're, now party. P a r t y party. Uh, that's a fun song. Uh, Captain Morgan's Revenge. Then we get into the encore, which is drink. That's the main song that I first got into them in with. Zombies Ate My Pirate Ship is the next song. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's fun. And then we end on um, <laughs> Fucked with an Anchor. That song is so funny. It is. It is. <laughs> Fuck you. you you're, you're a fucking, fucking wanker. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck you with a fucking anchor. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a fun song. Oh, it's so catchy. It's so, so catchy. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I can't get it out of my head. <laughs> I... I think, I think, so we, this is like Wednesday. I think it was like Friday night or so, Thursday night, maybe. I like had it stuck in my head and I was just like, in my, I didn't sing it, obviously, but just in my head, I'm like saying it over and over and over. I fucking had such a great time with this set. Um, I don't even remember when the goddamn shark came out. I don't know. We what mentioned it earlier. Out. Yeah. There, Some dude came but out. But twice uh, yeah. came out and sang. With. Just a normal body, but from, like, the chest up, a shark head. Yeah, and then had a fin, like, sh- like the straps that go under, like, kind of like angel wings. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And a fin. Holding that up, yeah. yeah. Yeah, And he's sitting out there. He, I think he sung a little bit. Yeah. And then he went out to the guitarist and started biting his fucking leg off. Yeah, like, yeah. Such a goddamn blast. Yeah. Um, there was one song, uh, Tortuga, that before that, um, the vocalist is like, are you guys ready to get down with the sickness? I got so excited. Oh. Thinking they were going to cover Disturbed Down with the Sickness. That'd I, be fun, honestly. I, I got so excited. And then they're like, Tortuga. And I'm like, oh. But I, I still had fun. Yeah, but, I mean, but it was it fit thematically, too. Like, yeah. the sickness being syphilis. Yeah, yeah. So. You got to drink. To, or drink the beer so that you don't get. Right, scurvy. Cholera. Cholera, cholera. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> See, that's the whole thing. Looking back on history, water is fucking dangerous. You know what's not dangerous? Alcohol. So, kids, drink water. It's it's actually not that dangerous anymore. Not anymore. <laughs> we filter it plenty. Yeah, I, you shouldn't tell kids to drink, apparently. <laughs> so, um, adults, don't drink water. Drink alcohol. Kids, drink water. <laughs> Any hoodles. <laughs> um... Fuck you, fucking wanker. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to say that to somebody someday. 
it's it's fun. It's a fun <laughs> goddamn song. Uh, there was one other thing going on. I don't know when that happened either. The, the water can. Yes. I don't know when that happened either. But I, but like, the vocalist comes out. The lead again is like, we we started doing this a little bit ago. It sucks. We hate this. But you motherfuckers loved it, so we brought it back. So fuck you. So they have like a guitar tech come out and they strap a water can, like just a little water can, like that you water your flowers you with. You give to a kid. Yeah. And by strap, like duct tape, right? Yeah, I think it was duct tape. I, we, we were far, we were on the balcony, we couldn't yeah. see. I like to think it was just duct tape this water can. Um, head. But, and then they fill it with water from like a gasoline can. I think it was wine. I don't think it was water. I oh, thought really? he said it was like white wine. Oh. Again, I don't know if it was or not. I This is my slight recollection. That's even funnier. That was like, we would put wine in this thing and drink it. And it sucks to do. It's a pain in the ass. But we're doing it. Okay. But go ahead and continue. But then, they fill it with a liquid of some sort. Yeah. I thought it was like water from a gas tank. <laughs> That's what it looked like. But anyways. Um, and then they go around to like all the people and he just like stands up on one of the risers and like is pouring it into people's mouths or all over them or like just lean because it's a watering can so you know it's gonna like do the, like yeah. a shower head type effect yeah so you're just gonna open your mouth and you'll get like one stream and then the rest is just hitting you in the eyes and the yeah. face and if it's wine that definitely sucks compared to water yeah i think it's water then it's all sticky and like burning if it gets in your eyes yeah i think it's water if it's water i'd be fine with that like but there was a one moment where um because you have the photographers who take photos during the entire concert and like he leans over oh, and yeah. like does that but i think it went all over the place i mean yeah i mean yeah that was a lot but i don't know that was funny at first but i i got tired of it really i did fast. too honestly yeah. that bit was it did get old very quick yeah at first it was funny but then it was just like okay this is happening for this entire song but the energy on the stage, the the funness of just the show itself, I, I love this. It was so much fun. Yeah. I would see all three of these bands again. Oh, me too. Me um, too. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's a blast. Uh, anything else, though, for Elstorm that you want to bring up or no, talk about? No, they were phenomenal. Next time I want to see them in Pirate Garb. <laughs> Which I mean, that's gonna be hot as shit. Too. Oh, I'm sure. So maybe yeah. that's why they don't do yeah, that. Maybe. And they're doing more of like party pirates. Yeah. Hence the song P A R T Y. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe you're not in the mic anymore, but maybe. Maybe. There you go. Now you're in there. <laughs> um. We're so, gonna buy new mics. These mics suck. Yeah, in like twelve years. So, haha, uh-huh, for you who are listening. This is like three people, so thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Any fucking way. I'm just going to cut that out. Uh, this show is awesome. Um, if you're even remotely into metal, go see this. If you're not in the metal, go see this. This yeah. is. The, you don't have to be in a metal to go see this. Just just go. This is so much fun. It's it's a blast. I Like I said... Not just metal music, but music in general. Like when we go to um, the Nutcracker every year. Mm-hmm. And this last year we wore our band. Sweaters. Oh, yeah, we did. Yeah. But at the same time, we definitely were not in uniform for that. You needed to be in dress shirts and like nice dresses and shit like that. And we show up in like metal, ugly sweater, Christmas sweaters. I definitely felt out of place. But at the same time, we got so many compliments. And I'm yeah. like, Oh, go fuck yourselves. So like, like, I'm here to have fun. Awesome sweaters. Like, I'm not here to be seen. I'm not here yeah. to fit into your mold. I'm here to be me and have fun. Yeah. And that's the whole point of music. And that's what this, like, Elstorm and Glory Hammer in particular. Luthera was great. Don't get me wrong. But they were they were closer towards what you would expect at a metal yeah. show. Yeah. Glory Hammer, Elstorm, it, they lean into the comedy aspect of what they're doing the other band that comes to mind that does this is still panther where oh, it's okay. they're musicians who can play their instruments and can write music don't get me wrong it's good music it's fine mu- like is it the greatest music ever no it's not but it doesn't need to be it, the point is we're here to have fun we're here to enjoy what we're doing 
enjoy music and that's what these artists are doing so it's nice to have that refreshing just for me personally like it's okay this is music it's fun it's supposed to be fun if it's not fun you're doing something wrong so you don't have fun like during avatar no i do i do i'm, I'm saying i don't it doesn't happen all the time i'm just saying sometimes it can get lost and oh. you're trying to fit a mold or trying to fit into something oh and that detracts from what you're really there to do which is to have fun see i feel like okay i i, I get your point i just feel like we are always opposite where we were into this but we tried to fit into society Yeah, I don't think I. I think that's you more than me. Personally. It was me. No, um, not so much. Like, but I, I'm, I'm the so one like into. I work at an office. I have to dress a certain way. I have to look a certain way. It took me a long time to like cut my hair how I wanted it cut because I like was so into like I. This is not how office people look. That's definitely a you thing and not a me thing. Um. Yeah, we we said it already. So much goddamn fun. Going to see these bands again for sure. Um, but definitely, definitely, if you can check these guys out, all of them, all three of them. And if you can't just go find some live music somewhere, there's so much out there and maybe you'll find something better or just as good or worse, but whatever, at least you tried and that's the whole point. Yep. All right. We'll see you around. Bye.